good and faithful friends, Jerry Rosa here in the Rosa String Works Workshop. And we have a video, you can probably tell by the title, it's not my normal topic. For those three people that are uh, you know, going to be dissenters and, and cry that it's not about musical instruments, first of all, read my about statement on my homepage. And second of all, just read the shirt. <laughs> For the rest of you who are, as I mentioned already, good and faithful friends, I think you'll get a kick out of this. So I'm famous within the family for cooking popcorn. I don't cook. <laughs> cook. That's the only cooking I do. I can make a bologna sandwich and beyond that, I don't cook. <laughs> and that's the truth. I don't barbecue. I don't do nothing. And, and, and I'm sure it goes back to my weird taste. And those of you who follow me already know about that. So I'm not going to get into that either. But for the rest of you who this might be your first video you've ever seen, check out my other 700 plus videos on YouTube. I build and repair musical instruments. I also have a fairly large handful of machinery videos where I'm building and repairing machinery. In other words, I uh, modified a backhoe to fit on my Bobcat fairly recently. I made a dump trailer, uh, a grapple bucket, a log splitter, uh, for the front of my bobcat and I had built my own bandsaw. So there's all kinds of things out there and there's more than that too. A hydraulic brush hog. So check out those videos if you're not interested in the uh, musical instruments. But apparently you are interested in popcorn. So uh, I, without further ado, let's just say my uh, grandkids kind of inspired this one. <laughs> Hello my friends, Jerry Rosa here in the Rosa Stringworks kitchen. <laughs> I am uh, far from being a domestic person in terms of, uh, you know, kitchen things. Yeah, it's just not my thing. With my weird taste buds, food just isn't all that terribly important to me. However, I do like popcorn. And according to my grandkids, I should open a popcorn store because I make the world's greatest popcorn, according to my eight grandkids. I'm going to show you how I make my popcorn. Some of you will disagree and think yours is better, but you should at least give this a try if you've never tried it because you might be surprised. It's pretty good. I just use this air popper. It's a cheap little outfit that you can get at you know Walmart or some other box store. And I don't know, this one's pretty old now. It's probably 20 years old. You can measure out your popcorn here, how much you want to make. And then you just pour it in. And you just plug it in. There's no on off switch, but as soon as you plug it in, it starts uh, heating it up. It's a little bit noisy. Yes, I realize that, you know, popping it in a pan with grease and butter and those kinds of things is another way to do it. And I did it that way for years also. But this works really well. The reason I have it tilted back is to keep the kernels from just accidentally falling out. It's been just about a minute and the popcorn is starting to pop. Once it starts to pop like that, set it down flat so the popcorn can come out easier. And you give it about oh eight seconds, ten seconds to finish popping there and it should be done about now. Hopefully it won't pop anymore. First thing I just wanted to point out is I'm always using white popcorn. I never use the yellow popcorn. The white popcorn is softer or fluffier, I guess you'd say, and a little bit smaller kernels. The yellow is a little bit larger kernel, but but this to me works better and tastes better without being tough. Some of the yellow corn is really tough, I think. The next thing I do is I use this particular brand of uh, oil. This is movie theater butter flavored oil blend. Natural butter flavor for topping popcorn. And this is 
Colonel Seasons. Now, Orville Redenbacher makes a type of oil, and to be perfectly honest with you, I prefer this because I've tried them both. And then this, I just just go around in a circle like that, kind of make a little bullseye, and then close the bullseye in, go around in a circle again, close the bullseye. Not, you know, I'm not squeezing the bottle, I'm just letting gravity take its course. And I do that three times. Then I just fluff it all up like this. The reason I put the oil in first is so that when I put these dry ingredients in, they'll number one, they'll stick, and then they don't float in the air too much. Um, they can float in the air and put powder everywhere if you don't put the oil in first. Ask me how I know that. Okay, so anyway, I, the this first one, this yellow one is butter popcorn seasoning. Now you might think this is real salty, but actually when you read the ingredients, there's not that much salt in this stuff. So I, I, I flip it around like that. I, I put this on a little bit heavier than the other ingredients. I do it like three times again. And then I just fluff it around. Five or six times you do that like that and fluff it around. Then I, then I put this on, but I put this on a lot less. This is nacho cheddar. Popcorn seasoning. I I put a this one's old and it's starting to dry up a little bit. Um, ordinarily, I buy them both in in this small container. By the way, this small container really lasts a long time. So this has been around a long time actually. Now this I don't put on as heavy. I just sprinkle it real lightly because this has a much stronger flavor. And I do that about three times too, but but much lighter. And then the final secret ingredient that really gives the popcorn a cool flavor is I'm using, in this case, Freddy's um, Steak Burger and Fry Seasoning. It's just a seasoning salt. Now this is very potent. You don't put very much of this on, at least with my very sensitive taste buds, I don't put very much of this on. In fact, I don't add salt to anything anymore. This is the only thing I add salt to, is popcorn. And I do this very lightly. In fact, this has three large holes. I cover two of these holes and just barely let the, the salt come out of the one hole. And I do it light like that. Flip it over. Do it real light again, and then one more time maybe if I don't get it on too heavy on the other two. That one there was really, really light, so I'll just put a little tiny bit more. And then I just shake it all up really good. Of course, you can't taste it, but I can tell you for sure, this is excellent popcorn. In fact, until I came upon this little in bunch of ingredients, I much preferred movie theater popcorn. But now, movie theater popcorn leaves me wanting more. This is really good. Give it a try. See if you agree. Thanks for watching.